Right, we're ready to start on some of the fun stuff in my game now. So in previous lessons, I showed how to create the essential layout of the game with a map. The map contained rooms, and the rooms could contain treasures, and I had a player, and the player can walk around looking at the rooms and the treasures. Now the player needs to be able to take and drop the treasures, so that's what I'm going to explain in this lesson. Now, taking and dropping, if you followed the um, this little course up to now, it's not actually that difficult because I've already programmed into the various classes most of the behavior that we'll need to, to, um, to do that. So let's have a look. So here we've got the thing list class, you might remember. The thing list is a descendant of array list, so that can maintain lists of my objects. And uh, it's typed to hold thing objects, you can see that here. And the thing holder class, then that's any, that's for any object that can contain a list of things. So it could be the player, because the player holds things, an inventory of, of objects. It could be a room, because a room can contain things. Or it could be some sort of container object, like a sack or a, or a treasure chest. And that actually has its own thing list uh, field, things, and so that's what actually uh, maintains the list of, of treasures uh, contained by this uh, thing holder object. Now, how to take and drop? Well, let's go into game.java and find transfer ob. So this is the method that I use to take and drop objects, and it's actually pretty simple. It just takes three arguments. That's a thing and two lists. And I call the remove method, you can see that here, remove method to remove the thing t from one of the list, from list. And then I call the add method to add it to the other list. And that's essentially what you're doing when you're taking and dropping. If you, the player, uh, the player's list would be rem uh, have one object removed and the room's uh, list would have one object added to drop an item and vice versa when the player takes an item. So you can see now down here, take ob and drop ob, they actually just call the transfer ob um, method to do the taking and dropping, to do the real work. So what these two uh, methods do is that they first try to find a matching object, for example, on take ob, it looks for a matching object in the room, the current room that the player's in. Uh, or when you're dropping, it looks for a, a matching object in the player's inventory. Now, I previously wrote the thing ob um, method. You can see that here. Uh, sorry, the this ob method to search a list for an object uh, with a specified name. Now, here, these methods just take ob and drop ob. They just mostly, they're, they're error checking. They display uh, messages if there's a problem and the actual work is all done by transfer ob. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Oh, wait a minute, there's also a couple of commands I've had to um, add. I've had, if you look up at the top here, you see that I've added i and inventory. So those commands, if entered, will show the list of objects that the player uh, possesses. And obviously take and drop, you need to be able to enter those commands as well. Now, the let's have a look at the process verb noun method. All these have been discussed in uh, previous lessons in this series. The process verb noun method takes a command, the verb and a noun, uh, that's here the object, and so when the user enters take, it would be for example, the command might be take sword, so this would be passed out into the verb take, and then the noun here would be sword, so then that's passed on to the take ob method to do the transferring. If the sword is there, then it would be taken. And similarly uh, with drop, um, the drop ob method would be call, called with the noun, the sword or the lantern or whatever other object the user wants to drop. And then the inventory or i command that's handled by process verb. These are one word commands. And you can see that both of these drop down into the show inventory uh, method here and show inventory. Well, that's really very simple. It just goes and it gets the player. It gets the things that the player contains. And then it calls describe things. And all those methods I programmed uh, 
already. And you can see, if you go back to the earlier uh, lessons in the series, I'll explain how the game has been built up to that point. So that's really pretty simple to take and drop. So here I'm in the first room and there's a carrot here. So I enter the command take carrot. And it says carrot taken. Enter the command I for inventory. You have a carrot, look. There's no carrot here, so I can drop carrot, drop carrot, carrot dropped, look again. Now the carrot's back here, inventory, and now I have nothing. So that's how I take and drop objects. So now the state of this game is I've got a player, I've got a map of linked rooms, I've got treasures, I've got the ability to wander around looking at things, taking and dropping treasures. The only problem is that every time I play the game, uh, when I stop at any point and reload the game later on, I have to start all the way from the beginning. What I really want to do is to be able to save the game state so that when I save, any changes made, the, the position of the player, the objects the player's collected, and so on, that's all saved. And when I play the game later on, I can reload it. I'm going to explain how to save and load your game in the next lesson. Download the source code for these lessons from bitwisebooks.com. This Java series is based on the C-sharp programs that form the basis of the little book of adventure game programming available from Amazon.